See, the thing here that's worth repeating is that God loves you even when you're lost. 2,000 years ago, that story was kind of strange because no one that was listening to it would have said, that's what the Father would do. That's not what any of them would have done. And that was Jesus' point. God isn't like anyone we know. And his love knows no bounds at all. So God is like the Father that welcomed the Son back. And there are two kinds of people here in the room. Some of us might be like the younger son. Where we're like, hmm, yeah, I see some good things that God has to offer. I'm going to take some of those good things, like my life and my gifts and my talents and maybe the money that my parents make, my intelligence. I'm going to take some of those things. I'm going to go run away with it. And I'm going to go enjoy the world. And then we find ourselves at some point when we come to our senses, we realize we've really squandered everything that God gave us. And we wonder, when we realize we're lost, is God going to take me back? And that's why Jesus told that story, because those of us that are like the younger son want to know that God is really going to take you back when you're lost. Because God doesn't care why you're lost. He doesn't care why you left. He doesn't care what kept you away. He doesn't care how much trouble you got in while you were lost. All he cares about is that you are found now. He just wants to wrap his arms around you and love you and protect you and make sure you understand. Even when you turn your back on him, he still loves you. So that's one kind of person that's in the room, the younger son. The other kind of people that are in the room are the older son. Now, the older son didn't ask his dad for his inheritance. But we know he wanted it. The older son stayed at home and didn't partake in wild living. The older son never really came to his senses at all. But the story ends with the older son being very, very angry at the father because the father was joyful that the son came home. And he says, all this time, I've been here. I've done what I was supposed to do. You never threw a party like that for me. The older son is actually angry at the love and forgiveness that the father is showing, which tells us a lot about the older son. It tells us that the older son was really just hanging out with the dad to get all of his inheritance. He didn't really care that much about the dad and he hadn't grown to develop the kind of love that his dad had for other people. Does that make sense? They're kind of, the older sons in the room are the kind of people that do churchy things and say churchy things, but don't really love God. And there, that parable teaches us there's one God that loves you even when you're lost, and then all of us, we're either like the younger son we're like the older son. So as you guys get into your questions in small group, I want you to think about which are you more like? And what might make you more like one than the other? I want you to remember these three things if you find yourself lost when you wake up and come to your senses. Oh, my slides are back. So God loves you even when you're lost? We know that, right? That's worth repeating. Okay, here we go. Just like the youngest son, he, he came to his senses, the Bible tells us. Recognize where you are. Recognize that you are lost physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Remember that God wants you to be found. He doesn't want you to stay lost. He wants you to be found, and he's going to rejoice when you're found. And it's important to reach out right now and tell somebody, hey, I feel lost. I'm not sure what to do. Can you help me? All right, as we move to small groups, I want you guys to think about this question. What's one reason I might feel lost right now?